Welcome to San Joaquin Spotlight, a public affairs program featuring conversations about life in the central San Joaquin Valley. This program is brought to you in partnership between KFSR 90.7 FM and CMAC Fresno. I'm your host, Sevag Tatiosian. You know, today we're going to be talking about a museum, a park, and a wonderful place for kids here in our backyard called the Discovery Center, Center with Gary Pig. Welcome to the program. Thank you for inviting me. I should say welcome back to the program. You yes. know, you were on years ago when we were at the station. <laughs> I at enjoyed KFSR. that, I remember. So you enlightened us about what you've got going on over there at that time, and now I understand you've got some new things over at the Discovery Center. Well, we do. Uh, one of the things uh, that when we talked last, uh, our museum was not open. We, we were in the process of beginning the refurbishment. That's been completed. And now we have 4,300 square feet of uh, science exhibits, uh, places where kids can come and play. And, and, you know, our motto is touch, touch, touch. Well, and before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about you because, you know, you, you I think you're an accountant or you do something, you do a lot of things with numbers. I do. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, I'm a bookkeeper. Yeah. Uh, accountants are CPAs in California. So I'm, I'm a bookkeeper. I have a business called Valley Business Consulting and Training, and I have specialized in uh, working with not-for-profits, especially on their bookkeeping. Uh, contrary to somebody's beliefs, I, I occasionally run into people who say, well, bookkeeping for nonprofits is the same. No, it's not. <laughs> we have, it's more like cost accounting and uh, Cost accounting is not a high priority with most people, so I help them through those little hassles. And for nonprofits, because of the different sources of revenue and Correct. all that stuff, it, it could be more complicated, or, or may not. I mean, you're the expert in this, but... Well, it, put it this way. I think everyone who is in a nonprofit needs to think of themselves as a trust bank. People make deposits to you in the form of donations, but you have to spend the money based on what the promise you made. So if you say we're going to open a museum and we're going to spend that money on refurbishing exhibits so kids can play, that's what we spend it on. You know, it was years ago when I talked to you last and you had that same, you have the same passion as you do today. Why are you so involved in a nonprofit like Discovery Center? You know, uh, when I grew up in Palo Alto, um, they had a... a, a uh, uh, harbor and I was in the Sea Scouts and we had a 65 foot boat. I was the happiest kid in the world. I had a place to go every weekend. I could stay overnight, stay and work on that and I was around adults who were teaching me things to do and how to do things and how to make decisions and growing up. And so when I came to Fresno I was invited out to look at their books and help them with some bookkeeping issues. And so they, they toured me about and I looked around and I, and they were having struggles. And I was thinking to myself, look at what's here. This is acres of diamonds. Everything they need is right here. It just needs to be, uh, get some people in who have the same passion as, as maybe I do, and uh, we can make this work. Yeah, nonprofit, you know, I used to work in a nonprofit and I know the challenges, especially in this area, yeah. as far as generating fundraising and end Correct. revenue. And so we're in a unique area. So that's right. any nonprofit that survives is a winner in my book. Well, I think if a nonprofit wants to survive, they have to learn how to do at least one thing better than anybody else. And basically, they need to be able to sell that. Like people ask me, well, uh, do you need donations? Yes, I do. But you know, I'd prefer to have exchange transactions where people pay to come to the Discovery Center because now I know that I'm doing what they want. That's a kind of an ongoing yeah, marketing. Good point. And every nonprofit is good at something. They've developed an expertise. They should learn how to resell that so that they can pay some of their overhead, which most donors really don't like to pay. My situation is I have basically six acres needs repairs, maintenance, tending, and most of it is free to the public. So I have to be able to generate enough income and offer enough services so that all of that can be taken care of because we have this long-term lease with the city. It's actually Reedy Park. 
It was purchased by the, Reedy, uh, by the city of Fresno with resources from the Reedy family back in 1937 or 38. Wow. Interesting. Well, and so there's a museum on site. And yes. the thing that is interesting about the Discovery Center is you have outdoor, indoor, you have a place for parties. And my opinion is I don't know if people, the majority of Fresnans know you're out there. You know, uh, probably not. And uh, that's entirely our fault. We have now opportunities that we never had in the past uh, through social <coughs> media. Social media, Facebook, has been one of our primary re uh, ways of reaching people, letting people know what's happening right now. Twitter, uh, Instagram, and our, web and our website, thediscoverycenter.net. And that's where the information is going out. Talk about the museum. What can people expect to find at the museum? And, you know, as I start to look at opportunities for my children, they're in diapers, so it's early, but as I start to look at opportunities for them, yep. Discovery Center is on my to-do list. We're going. Absolutely. What can we expect at the Discovery Center, the museum portion? Okay, at the museum, uh, we have an entrance fee for uh, non-members, but if you buy a membership, and really a family membership is $60 for an entire year, and you can come every day because we're open every day. We're open seven days a week, you know, from 10 to 4 at least. Summertime, we're going to be open a little later. And what you're going to have is you're going to have a variety of exhibits, some of which you can play with. There's, an, uh, there's a three-register organ in there that you can actually play. <laughs> there's uh, the doctor game, you know, where the surgery game. There's uh, uh, some interesting exhibits that are static, like uh, there's some fish in, in aquariums. There's uh, a, uh, a basket collection of Indian baskets, very valuable Indian baskets that were made right here in California. Indians were renowned for their basket wow. weaving. We also have a science exhibit, NASA science exhibit. We have a direct NASA feed. And now, which is being installed right now, is a huge uh, television screen. And this is com coming from us from the uh, Irrigation, uh, Metropolitan Irrigation District. We're going to learn all about water. So you can come and learn about water also. And we also have lizards. We have uh, some uh, little uh, rodents, you know, uh, there's, uh, and some tortoises. So we've got a variety of, of activities. And on the weekends, we have uh, uh, crafts and that sort of thing inside the museum. And what's the age group you're targeting for? I mean, how many, what, like two-year-olds, three-year-olds, or something Absolutely. more? Absolutely. There's a number of things that, to look at here. Say you're a grandparent and you have real young children. You can come to the Discovery Center and you can just sit there with them and they can watch the ducks in, in the Walden Pond. If they're a little older and a little active, the two or three years old, You'd be amazed. They can play with the NASA exhibits. It's all low. <laughs> they can see that. They can play with the magnets, and they can, they can see the magnets exhibit. And uh, we have some exhibits that came from the Met. When the Met was uh, in town, they had a children's. Those we were able to retrieve and refurbish and put them out. Now, what about the outdoor area? Because I understand you have a big outdoor area, too. It's over four acres of outdoor area. There's some playground area. There's some uh, picnic benches. We have many people from the neighborhood, from the businesses in the neighborhood, who will walk over and have their picnic lunch. There's also um, the Garden of the Sun is on the south and side. And what's that? What's in there? The Garden of the Sun is uh, more formal garden arrangements. And they have classes where they teach people how to take care of uh, plants. And you can take a class there and eventually achieve what they call a master gardener certificate. And a lot of our uh, uh, gardener uh, companies in town have master gardener certifications. They also teach uh, how to, you know, grow different plants, that sort of thing. And also on that end is where we have an Indian uh, teepees. These are replicas of the summer teepees that would be in the Sierras. So, plus a large meadow where you could have a wedding or you could just run around. Well, and one of the things that, you know, I know that other parents think of all the time is where to have birthday parties. Because, you know, sometimes when you have birthday parties, you, you do it at your house and the house becomes a mess or maybe the house is too small. 
Lots of lots uh, of birthday parties so for two small talk houses. Talk a little bit about that process a little bit. So if I decided I wanted to have my son's birthday at the Discovery Center, right. you know, I would need to apply. There's a rental fee. Talk about that. Right. There, you would call the office, 251-5533. Uh, talk to Trish, and she can arrange what you need. Uh, for instance, if, if you want to have a science uh, program while you're having your birthday party, which a lot of people like, they like to have a, have a science program. Just And all the science programs meet the science requirements of the state of California. They, they meet all those requirements. So you're going to see a high quality science program. So what do you mean by science program? Because now you've got me interested. So, yeah. sci so I'm having a birthday party. We're well, eating. Can we bring food from outside? Yes, you can. No barbecues, but you can bring food from outside. And we have a small little galley kitchen in the Johnson building, which has a nice room for a birthday party that's not too big. It's, a, it's big enough that we would have tables. We could provide the tables and the chairs you, and Okay, everything. so we have a, let's say we're doing a birthday party at your mm -hmm. place. Yep. You have the tables, you have the chairs, right. and no barbecues. Right. So I, we bring in pizza or sandwiches. Absolutely. And we say, you know what? We want a science program. Right. What is going to be included in the science program? Well, you could, it, we have a, uh, there's a whole range of science programs. We have one, which is a, uh, a, a star lab, which we blow up a big uh, laboratory and the kids crawl into. And we have uh, Neil will give a program about the stars and the history of different signs and that sort of stuff inside this little blown up uh, wow. star lab. Uh, we have others. Let's say you have a birthday party and it's all boys or something and you want something really outrageous. Well, we have the blood and guts science <laughs> exhibit where we cut into, uh, you know, livers and see the liver flukes and stuff like that. Then we have other science programs about volcanoes and we can make a volcano and show how that works. And prices are reasonable? Very reasonable. $100 an hour plus, you know, 6 $7 per kid for a science program. Sounds very But it's flexible. Very Sounds very interesting. We even have, uh, on the meadow, in the spring especially, we'll have weddings. Very interesting. And people will bring uh, some, uh, like, set displays, set them up, and make a, a little environment that's just perfect for their wedding. So last time we talked, the museum wasn't up yet. Now right. the museum is up. Yes. Has that increased? I mean, has there been a demand to go inside the museum? And the reason I asked the question and mm -hmm. is because, you know, sometimes we in Fresno, in the Fresno area, think, oh, this is not a community that likes museums. But, you know, you may have a different opinion of that. Well, our museum is one that you can touch. Except for the baskets that are in the locked cases, everything is touchable. So uh, if a child is... Uh, and we want to encourage that environment where children can learn. And there's nothing like, we have a bench and it has these boxes in it. And in one of them might be seashells. You can touch a whole bunch of seashells. Coral, you can touch a whole bunch of coral. You can pick it up and turn it over. There's feathers, you can get a good look at a feather. Um, it's all about creating an environment where, you know, you probably had this experience that one day you were doing something and all of a sudden, kind of the light goes on and says, hey, I'm really interested in that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, that's, what, that's my goal. I want that child to have an epiphany that tells them, you know, I can learn. And I, yeah, and you don't know where they go from there once they decide, you know, they like this feather or whatever, the NASA exhibit, I whatever. I have no idea. Why is that important? Why is your place so important for parents to bring their kids? You know, that experience, hands-on, and you're in a group, you're in a social environment, you're with your parent, or you're with your grandparent, or you're with a good buddy. Um, I can tell you that we, I have one confirmed kid from the neighborhood who started out just hanging out. And we can, and, you, and if in the neighborhood kids, any kids can come and just hang out, that's free. One day, he came back and shook our hands and said, I'm in Fresno State. Congratulations. That really touched us. Because, you know, you don't always know. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, and you never know when that little spark's going to happen. Uh, but we 
uh, are blessed that we have a lot of volunteers. And you know, a nonprofit can't run without volunteers. Mm -hmm. People who are dedicated, who bring a professional attitude. Uh, we have a fellow named Dominic. He's a retired electrician. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All the things that he's been able to fix and, and, and take care of. Well, and where does your revenue so come from? I mean, is it mainly from donations and no, stuff? No, it's mainly from exchange transactions, sales. And that is, to me, the proof that we're providing a service. When our sales go up, when people demand for our product goes up, I know that we're on the right track. And we have some really good people, and they spend a lot of time trying to make sure that the exhibits are fresh, that they're clean, that there's it always has a fresh face. If you visited us today, and then you come back in a month, there's going to be a little difference than there was when you were here. And you're going around. You're going to the area I'm going to go to next. So, do you have exhibits or things that that are transient, meaning that you know you change out with other partners, or how does that work? So, so that if I've been to your place six months ago, right, I know that if I go again. You know, every other month maybe, if I go again, right. that maybe there's different things there. There will be. Uh, we, at this point in time, we don't have an exchange of features with other museums uh, where they would bring in a big exhibit. But uh, we have the, you know, one of the, pro one of the buildings on the Discovery Center, which would be of interest to some people who are into architecture or the history of Fresno, we have uh, an adobe barn built in 1893-94, sometime wow. in there. We can only use it uh, for storage and for re repairing our, our, uh, our features, and that's where many of them are stored. And so they'll come out of that environment, and then those others would go back in. But uh, with kids playing so much with the, uh, we, we do have to repair things, <laughs> and we're happy to do that because we know it's working. Where are you located exactly? Because, it, you know, some people may not know where you are. Right. If you Google this and you put it Reedy Park, you would find it. We're out near the airport. We're on North Winery, just north of McKinley and south of Clinton. And so do you have regulars that bring in... You know, like I'm thinking maybe a grandparent or a parent that regularly bring their children. Do That's you, correct. Do you have a regular clientele that comes visits you? Yes, we do. And they're recognizable and we say hi to them. We know who they are. And uh, they bring their, their grandchildren. And uh, we also have dads and moms who will bring a child who's maybe they're just visiting. And that's a nice place for them to go visit. It's quiet. We also have a tortoise pen, which has a nice place to sit and uh, converse. We have a very, very nice bench that's under a tree in the cactus garden, the Deutsch Cactus Gardens. A lot of wedding photography goes on there. So the, the tor uh, tor I imagine you have real tortoises Yes, out there. we do, real Talk tortoises. Talk a little bit about them. Yes, we have real tortoises. And uh, the, where we get them, honestly, is that uh, sometimes they outgrow their home in Fresno, and a couple will bring a tortoise and then we can evaluate it and decide whether we take it or not. There's no guarantees that it'll still be alive next year, but you know we ex expect it will be, and uh, we take as good a care as we can. How many we do put you have, the by pen. any chance? In the tortoise pen right now, uh, I'm going to say we have about 10. Wow, you have that many. And some of them are quite large and quite old. And then you have a cactus garden, so we tell us about that. We have Deutsch Cactus Gardens. Back in uh, 1994, Fred Deutsch, uh, who had this wonderful cactus garden he'd collected all over the world, he was on Van Ness Avenue at his home. He left that to uh, the county, Fresno County, because Van Ness being in the county. Well, the county decided it was not a good place for the cactus garden. It would have been better someplace else where it had, had more traffic. So the Discovery Center in the county reached a deal and uh, the cactus gardens was moved, and we have over, light, slightly over an acre of Deutsch cactus gardens, and it has a trust that helps support it. And uh, it's beautiful, and we have cactus from all over the world, uh, even the Galapagos Islands. Wow, very interesting. And those blooms are gonna be coming up, and I expect with all the wonderful rain we've had, we're gonna see a lot of great blooms, 
and we have some very, very dedicated people. Paul Mitchell, which we, who we just uh, honored at the Association of Fundraising Professionals National Philanthropy Day. He's our main man, our main curator. 85 and still working <laughs> a cactus. Well, and you said a lot of photography gets done there. I Correct. mean, what, what are they taking pictures of, the cactus? Blooms and uh, weddings, <laughs> brides and grooms. And is there a charge to those kind of things? Uh, not for taking pictures. You can come by. We have a gentleman who brings his clients out there all the time, and they take a few weddings. We don't charge for that. But if you have a wedding, yes, we are going to charge for that because we're going to have to close down the park. Very interesting. And so your hours are every day? Or? Uh, 10 to 4 right now, every day, seven days a week. So you can come anytime. When is the better time to come? You know, is it the winter or the summer? When would be the best time? You know, in Fresno, unless it's raining, um, and even if it's raining, the museum's open, uh, I don't think there's a better time to come than whenever you want to. And parking? I mean, talk about... Parking is not really an issue. We have all the parking on two sides of uh, winery, so lots of parking. Where, where do you see this Discovery Center in the next 10 years? I mean, are you, are you thinking, you know, bigger and better things? Because it sounds like there's been much improvement since the last time. We oh, there's been a huge improvement. <clears throat> what I see, uh, the museum, it uh, follows the education curve. An environment where people can learn. There's lots of new ways of learning things. Um, and there are lots of people who have maybe deferred learning uh, because maybe they thought they weren't up to it. And hopefully we can begin offering classes and on a regular basis. <clears throat> and the classes could be about gardening. It could be about raise, uh, cooking. And that's where the uh, Junior League came up uh, with the youth garden that's on the other side of the street from the Reedy Park. Uh, we have that one and a half acres over there. And we have this paved, uh, raised bed gardens, so anybody is accessible to. And we're going to be having programs there. And the Junior League is going to be manning some of those programs. Discovery Center will. But I would say that the education side of the Discovery Center, I think, is what our leading edge is. And when you say a garden, what, what can people expect at the garden? I mean, is it like a... Vegeta vegetables, vegetables or? and vegetables, fresh vegetables. Interesting. So uh, who gets to reap the benefits? Well, hopefully the kids of the neighborhood. Uh, hopefully we can start a program where we have regular classes where moms and dads from our neighborhood, which is an underserved area, it's a, considered a food desert, they can come and they can see how uh, what a really, I, a lot of people don't know what a real fresh carrot tastes like. Interesting. Right pull it right out of the ground and wipe, uh, you know, wash it off and eat a carrot, you'd be amazed the flavor that's there. And then maybe someday we'll have a, uh, a um, farmer's market. Well, and you have a lot of land out there. It sounds like it's not just a small area. No, it isn't. Uh, we have over six acres. Getting the word out is so important these days, and nonprofits don't have humongous budgets for marketing, I'm sorry, we're not no. like you're not like this, no. you know, a big business that have that has thousands. A marketing of thousands budget, of dollars. yeah. <laughs> so, how are what are the ways you're getting out there with the information? Social media, primarily. Mm -hmm. uh, social media is our primary way. Uh, Facebook has been our main uh, method of distributing information. Uh, uh, Twitter, somewhat, and Instagram, somewhat, and then our website is our new front door. Teachers. Teachers. There's al they're always looking for a place to take kids, and right. they're always looking for educational op opportunities. Right. And when I was a kid, I loved field trips. I loved them. Right. Talk about what you have to offer for teachers. Well, first of all, in February, we're going to have a teacher's night, which is going to be exclusive to teachers. We're going to set up some of the exhibits. We're going to talk about some of what we offer, and we're going to invite all the teachers in elementary schools primarily in the Fresno County so that they can come and actually talk to the instructors, get a sense of what's available, decide whether this is a, a field trip opportunity that they want to look at. And that's been a major source of our uh, annual income as, as schools bring a busload of uh, fourth, fifth, sixth graders. What are you looking for from in the community? I mean, you have a magic wand. We're running out of time, but let's say you have a magic wand and you 
get one wish with this magic wand, what is it that you need from the community? Buy a family membership. The interesting thing about our family membership is you can give it to your next door neighbor. You can give it to your uh, cousin who just showed up that you didn't realize was coming, looking for something to do. Here, take our membership, go to the Discovery Center, we'll catch up with you. And, it, you know, that's for $60? for yep. the Wow, that's an incredible price. Yes. And uh, so when they get the membership, they go see, I mean, how long, how many hours should they allocate for the Discovery Center? I would say a minimum of two and a half hours. Sounds like there's a lot of exciting stuff out there. Well, there's, there's I mean, you, it would take you probably an hour just to walk around the outside just to see all those exhibits. Excellent. We are out of time this week on the program. But thank you so much. How can people find more information about you? TheDiscoveryCenter.net. Excellent. That's all for this edition of San Joaquin Spotlight. To the volunteer crew that make this production and every production possible, we couldn't do this without you. They're you. behind the studio now, in the, in the studio, making it work with the cameras. Thank you to Gary Pig with the Discovery Center, here talking You're about welcome. the great things happening there. Thank you to those listening to this broadcast on 90.7 FM KFSR Fresno and to those watching this broadcast on Comcast 93 and AT&T 99. Hope you enjoyed the program this week. I'm your host, Sevag Tatiosian. Tune in next week to a new edition.